In the 1960s, before the first moon landing, the first generation of video games appeared on large computers. A man named Ralph H. Baer conceived of the idea of a home video game and created a design for a series of consoles which ultimately appeared in 1972 as the Magnavox Odyssey, the very first console which would be hooked up to a TV. But obviously, it wasn't quite like a modern console. The Odyssey actually came with translucent overlays that you would put on your TV screen to imitate graphics, as well as board game style accessories like dice and play money. The Odyssey actually sold pretty well, but it wasn't until the arcade game Pong that the public began to really notice the video gaming industry, which sparked a revolution in gaming. The second generation of consoles introduced the ColecoVision, notable for being powerful enough to run popular arcade games, the MicroVision, the first handheld console with interchangeable cartridges, and of course, the famous Atari 2600, which helped make the concept of game cartridges the dominant model of game distribution for quite some time. Unfortunately, these consoles suffered from the infamous video game crash of 1983, a huge downturn turn in the gaming market as many new companies tried to <laughs> jump into the industry and capitalize on it, leading to the production of many poor quality games and consoles, as well as growing competition from the emerging PC market. As a result, only the well-established companies survived. By the third generation, video games were kind of seen as a fad that had passed. But Nintendo revived the gaming industry by releasing the NES, or Nintendo Entertainment System. And the Game Boy handheld, by the way. Nintendo's focus on strict quality control and, for the time, advanced graphical capabilities made the NES its highest selling console in North America and bringing the console race back to life, which led us into the fourth generation. That featured the Turbo Graphics, the first 16-bit console, and more famously, the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo, or SNES. Cartridges were still dominant, but it was during this time that optical media, CDs to be precise, started to uh, look pretty attractive. The higher capacity of CD-ROMs compared to cartridges led them to be used in next-generation consoles like the Sega Saturn and the original Sony PlayStation at the start of the fifth generation. These consoles were among the first to bring real 3D graphics into the living room. CDs also had the advantage of being cheaper, making it easier to produce copies of games in bulk, leading both console manufacturers and game developers to prefer them over cartridges thanks to their higher margins. However, the Nintendo 64 did manage to enjoy success as a cartridge-based system, with Nintendo touting quick loading times as a big advantage over discs. But by the sixth generation, well, that was where the beginning of the move towards a more PC-like architecture to make consoles more useful as general purpose devices that could do more than just play games really happened. And we also saw a shift away from cartridges entirely and towards DVDs from CDs, which could hold significantly more data, making it possible to develop games with better visuals and more content like full voiceovers. This generation also saw some of the first experimentation with online play, as well as both flash and hard drive based storage, so you wouldn't have to fiddle about with memory cards, a feature found on both the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox. It wasn't until the seventh generation of consoles hit the market in 2005, with systems like the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Nintendo Wii that we finally got now standard features like HD resolutions, that is as long as we're not talking about Nintendo, online play, and motion controls. This generation also included support for new disc formats like Blu-ray and the long since forgotten HD DVD, as well as large hard drives that enabled companies to make the internet a very popular way for gamers to download more content. The current generation of consoles, the 8th generation including the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Wii U has brought us significant performance improvements, those were long overdue, as well as innovations like the Nintendo 3DS which allows the user to see a stereoscopic 3D image without glasses. 
Most of the changes in the eighth generation, however, revolve around further integration with other media, such as web browsing, streaming, visual media, social media sharing, and even streaming what you're doing on your console to other devices for playing on the go with Sony's PS Vita or at a computer with Microsoft's Xbox app. But I mean, come on, Linus. Why would you buy a console at all of any generation when you could enjoy your PC in all its glory? Well, honestly, consoles aren't as powerful as PCs. We know this, but they're made for gamers who may not care as much about the absolute highest frame rates or resolutions and want to kick back on the couch and play. But with that said, as the technology improves, maybe one day they will merge together and the glorious console master race will be born. I wouldn't hold your breath, though. Speaking of holding your breath, have you ever tried this? Walk into the local convenience store or supermarket, take a deep breath, and see if you can hold it for the amount of time that it takes to walk way the crap into the back, find someone to unlock the barricaded razor blade lock for you, get it, walk back to the till, buy it, and drive back to your house. I actually don't recommend doing that because you would probably pass out on the floor. Dollar Shave Club, though, makes it so you never have to do that because they'll deliver your razor blades, your Dr. Carver shave butter that goes on clear, your One Wipe Charlie's peppermint scented butt wipes for men, and your post shave moisturizer directly to your door once a month so there's no need for you to leave the house in order to look like you leave the house. And it's just simple high quality stuff. There's no vibrating handles or other nonsense that's a lot more fun for other people than it is for you. Like who wants to have a vibrating handle in your hand? Think of other places they'd be more useful, but not in your hand. It's just high quality razors and other bathroom supplies to your door once a month. So head over to dollarshaveclub.com slash Linus, linked in the video description, to join the club today. It's available in the US, Canada, and Australia. So thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, hit that button. If you disliked it, hit the other button. If you want to check out our other channels, maybe Check them out. Channel Super Fun's pretty fun. It's actually super fun. It's right in the name. Also, leave a comment if you have suggestions for future videos just like this one, and subscribe and follow and all that good stuff so you don't miss any fast-as-possible episodes just like this one.